Good morning. So this morning, welcome to Jackson Community Church. Whether you are gathered here in person in our sanctuary or whether you are joining us from somewhere in the virtual world, we welcome you. Today is a special day because we do have a special guest this morning. We have one of our tenant graduating seniors who is our own graduating senior. Caleb White is joining us this morning. And so this morning's reflection will be a live interview. So that's always a little exciting. We're gonna move a microphone over to make sure that you can all hear him. So you're gonna bear with us a, a little bit later in the service before we start the scripture, just as we migrate a microphone. Um, we only have a, a certain number and we wanna make sure the audio goes well and that we don't have feedback as we have done before with our wireless. So technical things happening all the time, but I think today we have good connection. God bless, please let that be true. And really warm weather. So the fans are going and the windows are open, at least some of them here in the sanctuary. Before we begin church, we always start with any announcements for the life of the church. One reminder this morning is that it's communion. So everyone here, if you're here in the sanctuary, we're still being really cautious. So everybody should have their own little cute kit, individual, the wafers on top and the juice is underneath. If you, if you don't have that and you need it, one of our deacons can get it for you. And if you're at home, this is a reminder that now's a great time, if you haven't already, to go find the elements that you would like to use to participate in communion. And remember, the definition of communion is very expansive, so it can be your cup of coffee and a donut, if that's what you want. If you want to have donut communion, it's all good. We also have an upcoming service in a few weeks that will be a reflection on Father's Day, during which we will do another one of these live interviews with Bob Carper. So just a little teaser to tune in for that as well. And finally, a reminder that we have an upcoming golf tournament that is a fundraiser put together by our choir director, Billy Carlton and our choir to benefit the church's music program. And that is on Tuesday, June 29th, Joanne mailed out the registration form so that you can sign up your team. We're looking for teams of four. You, you can bring yourself and some friends, whoever you want to bring. This is at the Wentworth. And is there any other detail I need to provide, Meg? If so, you need to. Okay, Meg has forms here in the, ha in the church physically if anybody wants to sign up that way. But if, you, if you're at home, you can get it from the newsletter from Joanne. And if you didn't get it, please let me know. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church besides a deacon's worship planning meeting for tomorrow night? Tuesday night, sorry. Last track of my days. Tuesday, 7 p.m. by Zoom. Then we enter this time of worship. And we do so by centering and listening to the music provided by Alan. So I invite you please to relax, put your feet on the floor, put your hands in your lap, open your hands to give, to receive, close your eyes and arrive here in this place. Thank you, Alan, and I recognize that as a meditation on the Lord's Day. If 
anybody has just arrived, especially here in the church, make sure you have a bulletin and make sure you have communion checks. They're by the door if you don't have them yet. You should find in your bulletin or visible to you on the screen if you're in the room, the call to worship, which is inspired by the work of Alex Joyner. Today we're integrating the theme. You can go for it, Alan. We're integrating the theme of the scripture passage, which comes from John 4 and talks about the Samaritan woman at the well with the reflections that Caleb is sharing with us about crossing the threshold of his life into a new place by his graduation. And so many of our readings will reinforce these two themes. Oh, great teacher, guide us all as students of life live in faith. taught us as the written word revealed by the histories, letters, songs, poems, prophecies, narratives, and teaching texts that our spiritual ancestors recorded as their encounters with you. You abide as the inspired word breathed into us by the Spirit, even now speaking into our lives and world through your presence and energy. Today, we ask for your enlightening presence as we gather, learn, worship, and serve together. Amen. We will attempt to be efficient, if we can, this morning with our prayers. We begin always with prayers of concern, then we move to prayers of gratitude, and we pray over our body, each body, our gathered body, which is the body of Christ, as we pray for the healing and hope of those who need the presence of God. We begin with concerns. I'm going to invite people in the sanctuary first, and we use a microphone so that if you have something to share, it can be heard by those in Zoom as well. So does anybody here have a prayer of concern that you wish to share out loud with this congregation? Meg has one. Is it on? Okay. Just go for it, Meg. Honduras that Honduras Hope works with. I've had a recent report of a visitor there who said that since the floods they had last year, the water mains haven't been repaired, the bridges haven't been repaired, the water even in the, the fancy hotel in town is dirty and people are getting sicker. So um, it's a fairly dire situation in a place that didn't have a lot anyway. So could we pray for them? So pray for the villages and the communities with which we've worked in Honduras. And as the theme of water arises today, water can be a gift. It's, it's essential to life. And when storms hit, sometimes potable water is gone and is so necessary. Other prayers of concern here in the sanctuary? Barbie? I think we should offer some prayers for Susan. She's remaining at home today. She's under the weather. Otherwise, she'd be here in the audience. Thank you. It's for Sue, who's under the weather and had to stay home today. She normally is uh, tra <laughs> transporting people around. <laughs> We're having feedback issues. Transporting people here. So we miss her, and we pray for her wellness. Other prayers of concern in the sanctuary. If there are any folks in Zoom who wish to share a prayer of concern, please unmute. And Jeanette or Sandy, if you see anybody, please encourage people to go ahead and share. We have deacons that work in Zoom. I think we're all set. 
okay, everybody's being quiet today. Well, then I'm going to give you the names that have arisen over the course of this week. Some of these are familiar. We've been praying almost every week. Huntley, Michael, Barry and Janice, Bill, John, Judy, Deanna, Richard, Ray, Donna, Scamp. There are others that we don't name who are also on a journey and seek healing or comfort as they vigil with people who are leaving them. And those who wait with tension for the hope of things such as the conception of a child or an answer to diagnostics and the uncertainty of the outcome and what may happen next. We pray always for our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe. We pray for our first responders, those who serve in the military, many of whom are our children in other parts of the world. We turn now to celebrations. And since Zoom had to go last the last time, I'm hoping somebody in Zoom has something fun to tell us that fills you with gratitude or happiness that you would like to share. So again, Jeanette or Sandy, if you see anybody who looks like they want to share happiness, that would be great. It looks like everybody's so happy they're quiet. Okay, they're so they're happily quiet or they're already hot. So Jean here <laughs> in the sanctuary, Jean in the purple shirt, Alan, is ready to share happiness. All my birds that have been using my feeders have just had babies. And I have little <laughs> tiny birds that are only about two inches long coming to the feeder now. And it's really fun to watch them. It makes me happy as I could possibly be. Lovely. Thank you, Jean. Uh, we have some we have some gratitude and happiness here. Irene, go for it. I have a little bird house of the I have a little birdhouse of the, the, our little library here, and it's down at the pond. It's been there for years, and this is the first year I've had birds nesting in it. And it's just lovely when I water the garden, and there the little bird peeping out. <laughs> okay, well, we're sorry. We're sorry for that. Is there anybody else who's happy in here? You may have to have me translate it for you because we're getting a lot of feedback. <laughs> All right, then I want to share a few things that we celebrate this week. First is that Meg and Kate's father turned 100 this week, and I got to go to his party and say a blessing, and it was fabulous. And at 100 years old, Ralph is painting five to six paintings a day He's changing styles. He used to be really detail-oriented and very realistic, and now he's more loose and free with his colors, and, uh, and he keeps changing motifs. So there's the flower period, the lighthouse period, the boat period. There's many different periods in his creativity, and it might change every few days for all I know. So here's to a life well-lived. Uh, there have been other special birthdays this week. And we wish to um, celebrate all those who make our community a rich and a diverse one. And also the happiness of having Caleb with us crossing the threshold of graduation. He represents youth who have had a challenging time an uncertain time. Last year we heard from Maeve and this year Cabe, Caleb to, to know what it's like to be 18 uh, in the middle of a transforming world. I ask now that you will play, pray with me. Oh, holy God, we pray for the body of your people. We are your children made in your image and in your likeness. And you have poured out your gifts upon us giving us strength through our diversity. 
acknowledging that we are beautiful and beloved, though we are imperfect. And when we place our hands on a part of our own body this morning, and I invite you to do so, if you heard somebody's name and you know that there's a part of their body that you're praying for, or a part of your own body, or somebody else in your own life, Mary and her heart, please place your hand on that part of your body and know, oh God, that as we place our palms upon our own bodies, we ask that you, through your love and your healing, will touch the parts of our bodies, our minds, our hearts and our spirits, that you will restore what can be restored, that you will create equilibrium and balance, sustainability, or simply stability. That if you can, re, re, that if the person that we pray for can regain the fullness of being and wellness, that that can happen. But we also place ourselves into your keeping, knowing that we are not in control, though we try so hard to be. And that sometimes what you give us in your response is comfort, is the presence of others who can attend us hear our stories, and hold vigil with us. And that sometimes your response is to bring us back to the love from which we were born. We give ourselves and those we love into your keeping. We ask that you will hear us. But we know that your love will meet us wherever we are and that your love will be present, not just in this room, not just in the rooms of those gathered by Zoom, but in all of our sister and brother communities, in the place and the presence and the bodies of all of your children all over the world, wherever you are called, wherever you are needed, and even when we don't know to call you even when we try to say no, we know you are there knocking at the door of our hearts and our lives, asking to enter. And so this morning, we lift up our voices together as you taught us to pray. And I ask that if you are in Zoom, that you will unmute so that we can hear you share in this prayer together with us. As we say, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy Amen. You'll find the words to be thou my vision printed either in your bulletin or up on the screen if you're in Zoom. If you're here in the sanctuary, you are welcome to sing. Simply please mask in order to sing. That's the only request to make. If you're, if you're unmasked, you can't sing. We're still being a little cautious. And if you're at home, you know you can stay muted and sing as loud as you want. And Alan will lead us. Go for it.
All right, let's try. All right, testing, testing, one, better. two, three, sounds even better. Yes, much better. All right, there now we've got a excellent. thumbs up from everybody. Awesome. Everybody in the sanctuary can hear them and everybody out in the rest of the world. All right, so go for it, Caleb, thank you. All right, Jesus and the woman of, is that Sa Samaria? Samaria? Samaria, okay. So we came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to, that, to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things, do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, who that who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the, the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to come, keep coming here to draw water. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say, that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, and the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, probably stay, sure stay close. Ahead. All right, guys, so this is the unscripted part of the morning. Um, I'm going to just start by noting that this scripture connects Jesus to his heritage. The well that he meets the Samaritan woman at is the well of Jacob. It's a well of the man who was one of the great patriarchs of Jesus' faith. And we've been talking all weekend about what water means that it's a metaphor, it's essential to our life. Within three days, if you have no water, you will perish. But it's also a metaphor for the spiritual connection that we have to community, to our ancestors, to our identity, to creation, to each other, and to the sacred love of our God. And with that, let us turn to the reflection that comes from Caleb's own life. Our lives become another text where revelation happens. Our experiences tell us about God alive in this world. And so when we hear from Caleb, we are hearing a sacred story in the flesh. So Caleb and I already met and kind of talked out what he believed would be the themes of his reflection. So we're going to start by, if you want to tell people your, your school-based passions and then your hobby, what those are. Yeah, I mean, so in school, the big things for me were like sport for sports, you know, cross-country running in the fall and Nordic skiing in the winter, of course. And uh, yeah, that was, that was really important to me because I made, I made a lot of friends with those that I still have and still spend a lot of time with. That's really... Hey, Caleb, excuse me. Can you get a little closer to the mic, please? All right. I'll you want me to say that again, or do you think it was fine? Please, please say it again. All right. All right. <laughs> so starting again, I, uh, 
Yeah, now I'm out of the camera frame. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Right. Technical difficulties, you know, you know how it is. Anyways, let's try that again. So uh, <laughs> um, for in school, my hobbies were, or my, my favorite activities were sports, cross country running and Nordic skiing. There was the huge for me, made most of my closest friends were from those. That's what it was all about, really, was being with friends. You know, the sport, sports, it's fun and all, but it's the, it's the friends and the, the people that you're with that really, that really made it all worth it in the end. And then out of school, same thing was alpine skiing the, was always the big thing. I mean, when you live around here, it's kind of hard not to when you grow up around here. And that's another same thing, I mean, with friends and family and that sort of thing. So that was, those are definitely the big ones, big ones for me that kind of got me, got me through it all, you know, plus, you know, you got to go to school. School's not always fun, but when you can look forward to those sorts of things, makes it all worth it. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. And we, we talked about the enduring nature of the friendships you made. So do you want to say just a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, sure. Like, I mean, a lot, you know, when you go to high school and you meet a lot of new people, obviously, especially going from small town Jackson school to reasonably bigger, you know, Kennet and all that. And you, I've made a lot of friends in this time that I think I will, you know, gen, you know, generally you lose contact with a lot of people after high school, but I have some close friends that I think I'm really confident that I'll stay friends with for a long, long time, you know, even if we, you know, move to different places, we'll do different career paths, whatever life paths. And in the end, you know, I, I don't know, these friendships are really close and they just kind of, they're probably going to stay just because, yeah. oops, pardon me. Um, I don't know. They just kind of stuck and that's, you know, you get through it, I guess. Uh Caleb has friends that are going into the military. Mm -hmm. Caleb has friends that are going to the same school you're going yep. to. Maybe this would be a great time to migrate to where are you going to school? What are Absolutely. your plans? So, yeah, I'm going to Southern Maine Community College in South Portland for uh, a year to do a, an electrician certificate. And then we'll um, likely apprentice to become an electrician. And then you know, an electrician, <laughs> pretty much. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but there are reasons that you chose that. And yeah. maybe you could start by telling us what, what, what was your focus during your four years of high school that kind yeah. of led to the career tech. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, totally. I mean, I didn't really, there's not necessarily like electrician specific courses in school, but there are a lot of uh, basically Votech programs at Kennet. I think most people, you know, most people know it's a big thing there. And I took, I kind of dabbled in almost every they have a lot of classes there and, and I went through almost all of them and all of those were always kind of the best class, like the most enjoyable classes, even if I wasn't the greatest at those subjects, whether it was, you know, welding or, or computer design or et cetera, um, those sorts of things that, but they always were the most engaging and that sort of thing. And in the end I looked and most people who, um, you know, become tradespeople, a lot of the times it's because of a family member. I'm sorry, once again, <laughs> speaking with my hands and hitting the, hitting the mic. Anyways, most people, you know, um, becoming tradespeople, it's because of a family member, whether it's father, uncle, mother, whatever, grandfather, that sort of thing. For me, not necessarily the case. It was more of, I just kind of, I wasn't really sure, you know, I, you know, most people aren't. I was, didn't really have a great idea as to what I was going to do. So I kind of looked at my options and I just saw a lot of, pros with you know going into the trades in general and uh i was just like this is this seems like the best thing for someone like me who's not who doesn't have a great you know ideas like a, a, an idea that's I'm trying to think of the best way to word it really you're like probably a, not like you were a passion that's yeah. what that was that's what i was thinking of like okay. i didn't have a, a solid passion for something i was like i'm doing like i have had some friends who like they've been planning to go to military since before i knew them you know and then, but for me, or, or a job or something like that. And for me, it wasn't that. And I just saw a lot of pros with the trades out. And most people know them. I don't need to go into them, but yeah. And one of the things you did was you studied business for four that, years, yeah, right? So that was, I was, yeah, I should have got to that. So that was my, my focus uh, in the career tech programs at uh, Ken. It was, did four years of these business classes. And that was, those were easily my best class and my favorite classes the whole, um, the whole time. They really... Those were the ones I was looking forward to going to. And that, I think, I always knew I wanted to make a business at some point in my life. And uh, I didn't know what exactly, whether it be a you know conventional or, or something different. But, and I don't know for sure yet, but I think either way, I think that's going to help me out a lot in the future. You know, that's, I'm really, really glad that I made that decision. That was huge for me, I think. Well, and, and that, that kind of a, a background can 
paths across many different kinds of disciplines, but now pursuing the electrician certificate, that really bolsters your dream of once you're done with your apprenticeship, you could actually open your own business, exactly. mm -hmm. right? So there were a lot of pros to your electrician certificate. Uh, in case you guys have not picked up on this yet, Caleb is a planner. Yes. Um, yes. He, he sets goals and he likes to set goals that are fulfilling, but also practical. And this really, I am really enjoying hearing about this part of the education that's available to young people in our valley. And also the acknowledgement that this is an underserved area of need and professional vocation and calling here in this valley. And we do have an excellent array of vocational or career tech programs, but uh, plumbing and electrical were not among them. There are a lot of other ones, culinary arts, childhood education, coding and programming and graphics and welding, automotive. Yep. I know you said you wish you'd take more automotive yes. classes, so, and tell them why. This way car has a lot of issues <laughs> he wishes know. he could work on his car yes pretty much but you know you make the decisions you make it's too late now you gotta you can't you can't dwell on the past right we talked about challenges and there were a few wonderful realizations that came out of that conversation one of them was you talked about among the challenges that you experienced sports yeah right um, and sort of where you were and what you realized about that. Can you see more about that? I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, for sports, as I said earlier, the big thing for it was friends. And that, unfortunately, I mean, there's the downside, which was that, you know, I never was great at some sport, especially like, you know, cross country running in the fall. I was never that great at it. So sometimes I was, you know, a bit of a, like a mental challenge for me to keep doing it, even though I never really, you know, I didn't improve much. Well, I you know, improved a bit, but not like a ton. And all my friends are just naturally great at it. And but at the same time, I was just like, you know, I'm here with my friends and I'm having a good time and that's what matters. And not, you know, it wasn't so much, I had to kind of get past it. Some days it was really tough. Some days it was like, man, I don't know, like maybe I don't, shouldn't be doing this, but then I would, you know, relax a bit, you know, take whatever the next day and then get back into it and be like, all right, it's good. Um, it's a good thing. It's and, and I think when it, part of what you were saying, that experience and other experiences gave you the word that kept coming up was perspective, right? Yes, exactly. Do you want to say something about totally. perspective? I mean, that was, that was a big, that was just a big thing with some, especially with some other things with certain jobs that I've worked that weren't as easy for me, like just putting everything in perspective, you know, and that's what, that's what I really got the, the most I got out of any bad experience gives you great perspective really, or, or in good experience, you know, and it's like it with, we take like a bad one, you know, and you can look at better times and be like, see, see how good that was, you know, see how much fun that is to do. And it kind of, you, it makes you look at things in a better way. So in the end, it's actually better. Yeah. And you talked about, you know, along with that, so we talked about, I mean, COVID ended up actually having some positives for you. But even in that, when we talked about challenges, one of the things that Caleb said was that he recognized that actually how fortunate you are, that you, your life, um, the blessings that your life has offered you. And that came out as gratitude, right? Just the ability to contrast where you were, moments that were hard for you, and then say, okay, I got through that. And if this was hard, and I know I could do it, then the next time something hard comes along, I realize once I get to the other side of it, I'll find. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was totally, totally big part. One of the interesting inspirations that came out early in our conversation was that Caleb actually referred to the serenity prayer. And we're gonna say that at the end of this gathering, but it was interesting because the serenity prayer in your case, can, can you just say like the parts that you yeah, resonated well, it was, with? It was the, the first line of it, that God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And I, I, I think of that a lot and sometimes, I, you know, I, you know I, even that morning before I'd come to meet with you, I had just been, I don't remember what it was. It was something that I just remember thinking like, you know, I was having, you know, whatever a dilemma about something and then thinking that and like, just don't worry, kind of don't worry about it alongside that. Yeah. And uh, I know it's just a good thing to think of when you're, you know, whatever, dwelling in the past or yeah. having, you know, or seeing something that's coming up that you have to deal with. 
you just kind of that was it's really important to think that and I I don't know I, it comes up in my life a lot more than I realized and I realized that the other day when I was like wow I use I think about a lot you know that's like it's actually <laughs> it's actually a pretty important thing I'm not sure and we were trying to figure I was trying to remember where like I've been seeing it or where I've been thinking it. I couldn't remember maybe it was something at our house or something or here I don't know but I didn't see once again here we go <laughs> gotta stop talking with my hands <laughs> anyways so yeah it was something like that where I saw it a lot so I guess it's good to put up inspirational quotes in yeah. places and circles well it's deeply embedded in our culture and and it reflects that really powerful capacity to you were saying you know you can't change the things that have already happened but you can respond to the things that are happening now and the only thing you can control is your response right and that 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 capacity to kind of like talk to yourself and say dude relax you got this it's okay it's going to be all right was was like that self-talk was a really important part of your own self-care and your ability to bring yourself back to this really balanced place so we talked about when you go to college what you will be taking with you do you want to share what you remember I mean, about that it's a lot of like and once again perspective I go back to perspective I guess was just perspective on a lot of things whenever I'm you know whenever I'm in school I can always just say well you know let me step closer here um a lot of if something's a challenge I can always look back at the challenges I've made it through and that sort of thing and oh, <laughs> okay, made it yeah made it you know challenges I made it through in the past and I can look at it and be like and if I made it through that, I can make it through this sort of thing. I think it was a big one. That's it's a lot of, you know, keeping your head in the game. I think is, is yeah. I, I, I didn't mention right. that the other day, but that, that's just keep that showing was, up. Yeah, exactly. Right. Just keep doing, putting in work, putting in the effort, putting in the time, and remembering, you know, putting putting everything in perspective. Really, yeah, absolutely. So that was one of the things that Caleb will be taking with him. At, you know, like the lessons or the resources that you take with you into this next part of your world. Um, you talked about staying in shape. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a big one. So less, less of a mental one. And that's just really important to me. It's just, you know, being in shape um, at school, you know, not letting, not letting everything overpower that, you know, or, or other things like that. Cause being in shape is going to, in a way is going to keep you healthier in other ways too, not just physically, but also, you know, mentally, you know, if you get out and you, you know, do go for a run or you whatever do, do some sort of physical activity, you're gonna, you're just, your day is gonna probably be better. Yeah. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna have that, um, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's part of, you, you talked about one of the things you want to experience is balance, right? Exactly. Totally. And so staying fit by eating healthfully mm -hmm. and do, doing activities was part of how you wanted to take care of yourself. Another one of the things that you mentioned that was very important in your balance routine yeah. was was that, like having fun and that sort of thing. And I kind of discussed like there's like there's a whole balance in life that like and especially we'll use school as an example. I mean, you have like doing well in school and then having fun like with friends, like social sort of thing. And then, um, you know, st like staying healthy, staying you know, doing or doing sports or whatever. And then like family, like close, really close people. And that's when you get a balance you know, those four. And that's a big thing to me is like keeping that all in check really. Yeah. And not letting one get, you know, get too invested into one or neglecting one of those too yeah. little. So I think yeah. that's important. And so along with the, the, the fun kind of goes with the next one, which was uh, relationships, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about um, bringing with you your connection to your family and your friends. Yeah. Some of them will be on campus with you. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be in other places. Your family will be here. Yep. <laughs> yep. But they're the people you have fun with and they're the people you get your centeredness from. Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I know you talked about schedule too. I, yeah, think, I think we should just acknowledge that for Caleb, that's a really important one, right? Sure. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's what I've always been like really into scheduling things and making everything like a time thing. like trying trying not to be late as much as possible and like making sure that like kind of the day is like i've got like this 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 i don't like to wing things like to have like the days ahead planned out sort of thing and then i'm looking at my college schedule and I'm, for the first time ever it's yeah yeah okay so you get to choose everything pretty much and it's 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 overwhelming but in like a good way you know i'm i'm really excited for that to be able to make my own schedule and but at least i have the control i have the control over it and it can be i can choose how I guess loose or 
you know, strict it is and knowing myself, it'll be pretty, you know, I'll be like, all right, we're doing this at this time, this at this time, this at this time, you know, very, very specific. That, that's just something that it doesn't work for everybody. Some, a lot of people are like, oh, let's, you know, but for you, it's for the moment, but it's for me, I like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, it, and it works for different things work for different people. Yeah. But that's what works for me. I guess. So we also talked about what gives you hope. And one of the things that you talked about was really um, the time ahead. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And you had a visual that you were describing yeah, yeah. for that. That was, and that was this whole, it was like this image. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's like a bunch of paths going up to a line and the line says like right now, and they were all paths that you could have taken, but you did, you know, you took only one of them. And then it, right now is there's one and that's right now. And then it branches off again, all these paths that you can take in the future. So not the best description, but I think you get the idea. And uh, I think that's really really important that, you know, when it comes to hope, as you said, like that's yeah. hope. There's so many, there's so many ways that life can go pretty much from here, especially, you know, for me, I have so much ahead at this point. And that's kind of the big thing for me. Yeah. And I mean, you're really, you're looking forward to it. I haven't grown up in Jackson, the contrast of living on a campus, exploring this dream you have, a very practical dream, right? Of the electrician certificate and opening a business when and however that might happen. You talked also about what the, the influence of your neighbors and the community around here in terms of thinking about your future. Can you say more about that? I'm trying to remember this. Just, this is you remember on that, one. A lot of, that you have oh, a lot right. of Oh, right. Yes, neighbors. of course. Is a lot of, so a lot of neighbors and friends and sort of family friends and that sort of thing, which were, you know, they've lived really good lives and they're, and they're still living them, you know, and that's really awesome to me. And I think that gives me a lot of hope. And I look at them and I'm like, wow, they're, you know, they're, they've lived pretty much their best life, it seems, at least from what I see, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people I know seem to have lived their best lives. And I think that's really gives me a lot to look forward to. I'm like, look at, well, you know, look at how they're doing, you know, that could be me in the future kind of thing. And so again, I think that circles back to your capacity for perspective, right? You can look forward, but you can also see from your own community, from the place you come, the lessons that help you to look forward to what is ahead of you. So you're bringing with you those lives, those stories, those other relationships that have touched and shaped your own life that launch you into this exciting new part of your life. Yeah. Um, so just that perspective, that capacity to gain hope from where you come from and also to look forward with some idea of what you want to do. I mean, hope tends to be something that includes acknowledgement of current circumstances and then mapping out the steps that will move you from where you are to where you wish to be hope comes in a tangible form and you're, you're really equipped to be hopeful in that way and that's pretty cool i also want to mention that you had really great perspective about people we were talking about challenges we we're talking about where you experience love, and you talked about your circle of closeness and who, who you would say you, you receive love from or experience love with, and then kindness. Do you want to say something about that? Yeah, I mean, it's all, I think when it comes to love, yeah, as, I, as I've said before, like if you're really close to circle to you, which is like your family, and then you're really close friends, and then you're all right friend, you know, and then it kind of goes out from there. And that really, the really important thing there is that soup, that really close center of, of family and really close friends and that's where you know that's the love and the kindness is that's yeah. the big focus there but you gotta you know you show it to everyone but that, that's the most important thing i think is that yeah. center circle if you will and you talked about the, the importance of kindness to all kinds of people and uh, caleb was pretty funny most of us could probably um identify with this if you're if you're the person that lives in a community where others come to visit sometimes people that are visiting um do things that are you're not expecting like they they stop in the middle of the street to look at like the bright, beautiful leaves or to get out of their car and take a picture of the covered bridge or something that's just a little bit kind of like, if you're behind, you're like, ah, would you please like move a lot or, you know, you know, so sometimes we're not always patient. And Caleb said, you know, you, you might be the first one to sometimes be impatient. But then when he was talking about his circle of closeness, he talked about how it was family, friends, acquaintances, and then people that we don't know. And he talked about how you want to take a step back and again have perspective and treat others, 
others with respect and courtesy because sometimes we are the strangers. Sometimes we're the people that get lost. Sometimes we're the people that make too much noise at the wrong time of day. Sometimes we're the ones who need to ask for directions or have somebody else be a little bit extra compassionate to us because we're getting it wrong. And so the perspective to see that other people, sometimes we call strangers friends we haven't met yet, right? That you could see the humanity, the value of all the children of God and how kindness is sort of the currency or the language to meet all people, whether they're your family or your friends or those you haven't met yet was a great perspective. I just want to say that. And I think that brings us in pretty full circle. I know you also said you wanted to mention about the All of God. Yeah, so I got the All of God. I uh, was very blessed to get the All of God free scholarship from the church, which I'm very, very blessed. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. And that was, that's huge for me. And uh, just a scholarship from through the church. And that's really awesome. Um, really psyched about that. I got that on Wednesday night. So eternally thankful for that. Just wanted to add that. So not to embarrass you, but people that were coming in early were saying, I remember when Caleb was the young person that would go out for Sunday school and he was dancing like this out the door, you know, like you like, I like, remember too. <laughs> and, and, and the same people were saying, and now he's tall and his voice is deep and he's so thoughtful. So, you know, just, you know, these are the people that have watched you grow up and sometimes yeah. they're still surprised, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but what a pleasure. Um, to have this conversation and what great reflections really and wisdom you have been able to give to us to help remind us about perspective, balance, self-care, kindness, love. And so we thought as a conclusion to Caleb's part of the service, we would actually have Caleb lead us in the serenity prayer. You should be able to find the serenity prayer, just the first three lines of it in your bulletin. Um, if you're in Zoom, please feel free to unmute and let's say the serenity prayer together and reflect on how it frames Caleb's way of walking in this world and what he has shared with us this morning. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot, I cannot change. change. And now, before you leave, we're going to give you a blessing to launch you. So everybody, if you, I believe you will find a prayer in your bulletin. If not, if you're in Zoom, it will be posted up on the screen for you. I would ask everybody to pray in unison this prayer. And then we're all going to give a blessing to Caleb. So we'll pray together and you're going to receive so you, the prayer. So yeah, you don't okay. want me to speak. Yeah, you're, 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 <laughs> you get to be one. quiet for once. <laughs> oh God, you walk with, you us, walk with us in our struggles and in our, and in our celebrations. You lift cups, you lift cups to our lips, changing from the well into living water, the living water overflowing, overflowing for all. You feed multitudes, feed multitudes of, bread of bread and fish through actions, through actions and words. You burn as light, burn as light past from generation, generation to generation. You move with, you move all, with all of us, including Caleb and, and our communities, students and graduates. We leave this gathering out into, out into the wide world. May all of us, all of us bear your light and embody your, embody your love. As we live, we live teach, teach, and learn, and learn in this world. And now, everyone, if you will please, again, open your hands. And in this, you are giving your blessing to Caleb. This is a laying on of hands, but we're doing it for virtually. So I'm going to hold your hands, Caleb, OK? And please pray with me. Wherever you walk, you walk and, rest. and rest, wherever you study, serve, wherever you eat, whatever you eat and drink, abilities, common, abilities, common table. May your, soul May your soul always be satisfied by Christ's love. May your heart always be open to the energy of the Spirit. And may your mind be correspond in the mighty presence of the great I am.
God is with you. God is with us. Receive this community's blessing and go with God. Body and spirit. Go with God. He's getting applause from the congregation. And he deserves it. That was a that was a very brave because we've been pre-recording any video, any interviews that we've done for the last year. We visited with people, we recorded them, and then we edited them. So people, you know, we we always made sure that the message came across, but that nobody felt embarrassed or or uptight or self-conscious. And Caleb is the first person to do this live with us because we are really moving back to this hybrid experience. And we want the energy of what it means to be live and in person together in the conversation. And whether you're in Zoom or here, you can feel what it was like to, to just be with Caleb as he's reflecting spontaneously, which was really well done. Thank you. Friends, before we go to communion, I ask again always that you will remember this church is a place of safety and it is a place of service. While the building has often been empty, even though the doors have been open 24 seven, we have been serving people in this valley in conjunction with a network of other churches. And we have also been working in other parts of the world. And so today we remind you that the commitments you make, the offerings that you give to us, whether you do so by making a donation to jxncc.org or placing an envelope in the offering plate as you go out today. Um, you'll find envelopes out there in your pew. Those continue to help us be the vital community resource and spiritual resource that we have been through COVID and as we change. And now friends, we turn towards communion. And so, if you need a moment to gather your elements, this would be the time. Otherwise, I'm hoping everybody now has their tiny little, if you're here, your cute little individual communion kits because we're still being a little safe. We're going to begin with confession this morning. You'll find the confession in your bulletin or else on the screen. This too comes with the inspiration of this morning's scripture. God of living water, we confess the dryness of our lives, and I ask all of you to join me. The brittle words we have thought and spoken, the relationships that are crumbling, the arid perspective that centers on self, the cracked and jagged edges of our world. Hear our confession, O Christ, and rain down your mercy upon us. Brothers and sisters, as it said in John 4, those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of living water. That is the promise of a love that will never leave you, a love that will persist in finding you no matter where you are. All are welcome to this table. There is no barrier. All are welcome. You may come, you may partake of the elements. You may simply come and stand or sit in the presence of love. However you choose to be with us, you are welcome, you are loved. We now bless the elements. Oh, holy God, you who are indeed the living word, the one who fed us with your presence and your ministry and whose love was poured out for us, we ask that you will be present in these elements that we use this morning as we gather at a common table, both in person and across Zoom, to place ourselves into your keeping, to be with you and to be transformed by your love. Brothers and sisters, 
You'll find the Sursum Corda and Sanctus in the, in the bulletin or on your screen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Brothers and sisters, at the same place where Jesus met the woman at the well, he had sent his disciples out to get food for him. And when they came back, he spoke to them of the sacred food that would nourish him. And it was not the bread that they brought back from the village, from the marketplace. It was to fulfill his purpose in the world by modeling and walking among us as a beacon of love and transformation. This morning, when we break the bread and when we taste the bread, we are asked to partake of remembrance, to look as Caleb did towards his elders and the way they had lived their lives and to know that when we taste of this bread, and this love, we are receiving a love that will change how we live in the world, how we see the world and serve the world and experience the world. Take and eat, brothers and sisters, and do so in remembrance of a love that changed everything. I'm just going to check, does anybody in the sanctuary need help opening anything? You can raise your hand if you do. Okay, because we have people that can help you. Okay, I want everybody to be able to partake. And while we're helping people open their individual kits and receive the bread, we reflect also that when Jesus poured out, in fact, in the story this morning, he received the cup. But the cup was a cup full of well water that came from his ancestors, and yet he told her about the living water, which again is that love that flows out, that cannot be stopped, that changes everything. And so once more, let us this morning, as we take of the fruit of the vine, let us remember a love that was poured out for us, that it flows from generation to generation onto the lips and into the lives of our children as it does for us. Take and drink, and when you do so, remember.
is everybody okay with the juice? Everybody got it? Okay. Please turn then again to the remainder of our communion liturgy. You'll find it on your screen, and you'll find it in your bulletin. This is the thanksgiving. We are not alone, for God made us. Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? No. In all things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us has been proven. Neither death nor life, neither messenger of heaven nor ruler on earth, neither what happens today nor what may happen tomorrow, neither power from on high nor power from below, nor anything else has power to separate us from the love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have one final hymn that you're invited to share. Let all things now living. The words you can find in your bulletin or you can find on the screen, and we will flow from that into the benediction. Alan will play the hymn for us. And now we'll have the benediction, which we hear over our audio, and the words will either be on the screen or in your bulletin. Say.
just before we play you out, I just want to let you know that the deacons have prepared um, graduation gifts for some of our young people going through threshold for graduating. So we have a gift for Caleb to thank him and to congratulate him. And we'll, um, we'll, yeah, come on up. Come on up and receive that. Feel free to play us some festive music while he receives his present. <laughs>